Um, let me welcome uh, members to the fifth meeting in 2016 of the Standards, Procedures and Public Appointments Committee. I remind everyone to switch off mobile phones as they may affect the broadcasting system. Uh, we have no apologies today. Um, first item on the agenda is, uh, relates to delegated powers procedures, uh, and we're considering correspondence from the Scottish Government regarding the procedures for delegated powers. This relates to an order which was incorrectly laid under the affirmative procedure. Uh, the Minister proposes that an announcement could be placed in Section H of the Business Bulletin to clarify uh, what happened to the order during its parliamentary process. Um, I would be minded to accept that that's a reasonable response. Does anyone else have any other comments? Patricia. I have a question and then some comments. The letter from the Minister, um, the second paragraph, can I just check that it's absolutely correct because my understanding was that the problem arose because an uh, uh, instrument was laid under the negative procedure when it should have been the affirmative procedure. But the, le the letter from the Minister says the legal situation was resolved and the desired policy outcome delivered by immediately laying a laid only commencement order and a negative pr procedure instrument. Does he mean negative, or is it just a technicality that I don't understand? Mm. It's confusing. Yeah. It's confusing. It, it, it's certainly correct. As a member of the DPLR, I've been on the yeah. other side of this, obviously, sure. so I, I speak part of inform that. It was certainly a procedure that should have been laid under affirmative, was laid under negative. Um, uh, just, just, I'm, I'm just going to read it because I think we ought to be able to close this off. Uh, no, I'm not able to address that from my knowledge, so we better just check. Patricia makes a good, a good yeah. point. Uh, um, but, f f I mean, f the letter, correct. But from our point of view, it's, it's, it's more straightforward, I think. Okay. Well, my, my point then is um, nothing to do with the letter, actually, it's to do with the proposed notice. At point one, it says that the above order was purportedly made. Now, it wasn't purportedly made, it was made. Number one. Number four also mentions purportedly made, but says that accordingly the instrument made and laid as set out above and not being an instrument laid before and approved by the Parliament was not a Scottish statutory instrument and had le no legal effect. Well, that to me is um, not as clear as I think it needs to be, to be honest, if we're to effect what we said we wanted to effect, which, which was to make sure that on the parliamentary record it was clearly understood what had happened. And I, I really don't want to split hairs or dance in the head of a pin over this, but I've drafted an alternative form of words, which I think maybe works a little bit better without trying to take away the meaning of it. <coughs> I've just said, accordingly, the instrument made and laid as set out above was not a properly approved instrument and <coughs> therefore had no legal effect and is not, in effect, a Scottish statutory instrument. And then five, ministers have achieved the desired policy outcome by laying a laid-only commencement order and uh, whatever kind of procedure instrument it actually is, negative or, or, or affirmative. I just think it... I don't understand why... We just can't be very clear about this because that, that's the purpose of trying to get some words on the record. Just, just before I come to Mike Russell, let me just take some advice uh, because I think the word made is when it relates to when the instrument has legal effect. Is that correct? I have no problem with that word. No, no, but I just want to be clear about the use of the word purported. Just a factual piece of advice if, you, if it can be given. I, I don't have any knowledge of the background to this particular one, but it, it, it may be that purported has been used because um, something having been done under the wrong power or the wrong procedure means that um, the, sort of the making of it was, was null and void. It was not there for me. Yes. It, 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 it may Which is why the, I'm just trying to pin down yeah, from our advisors yeah. where the word purported comes from and not take a position on anything else whatsoever at this stage. So... I mean, that, that, that may be the case. I, mean, I, I don't actually have any 
prior knowledge of this one, and I don't advise delegated powers on no, the reform no. com committee, but that, that would kind of strike me as a possible explanation for, for the wording that's been used. Uh, if, if I may, I'll just take people in sequence. Right, yeah. uh, Mike well, indicated. I think, I think Patricia raises a very important point, because there is an, inc an illogicality and an inconsistency between Joe's letter and the notice. Joe's letter, paragraph two, the erroneous instrument has not been published on legislation Gov UK, nor will it be printed by Andrew. So in practical terms, it does not exist. Yes, it does exist. It, well, it went yeah. through the system. It can't be conjured out of existence. It may not have been legally made, in the ter that term made, but it does exist. You know, and philosophically, that is therefore wrong. But secondly, I think purportedly is a problem. I mean, because there's an inconsistency. It says the above order was purportedly made in paragraph one, all right, but then it says, um, provides it is not made. So either it was made invalidly, might be a better word, but I'd be unhappy with the word purportedly. Even, even if it is the correct legal term, that appearing in the bulletin appears to be, if I may use the term, mealy-mouthed, and trying not to admit that, that there was a mistake. So I, I'm not satisfied with it as it is. I think it needs a bit of work done to it. Uh, Mary. My point kind of follows on from the point that um, Mike made in relation to the word purportedly and, and the, the explanation that you gave in, in, in my mind, and maybe you need to clarify it a bit further, the reasoning you gave behind the use of the word purportedly is not what I believe purportedly means, which I think confuses the issue even further. Yeah. Well, I don't think purportedly is a legal term. I think something else could be substituted for that. No, it's not, no. I think we're perfectly clear that factually a document existed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was published and described in the uh, business bulletin as being a negative instrument mm -hmm. to give effect to, etc. So I think, I think that's beyond debate. Um, a, and, and it would probably be helpful if it was described in terms mm -hmm. as straightforward as yeah. I've just used uh, as to where it came from. Now, the government asserts, and, I, and the DPLR have accepted... Um, that because it had no legal effect, the legal issues around the document are resolved. But we, our issue is whether the parliamentary mm. process is resolved. And I think we're, we're all quite clear that uh, without something in the business mm -hmm. bulletin, um, the parliamentary process is incomplete and, mm -hmm. and un could not be understood by external people. David. Yeah. Th thanks, Convener. I, I would agree with what you're saying there. And would a simple way to deal with it be to just delete purportedly made and and just put in the instrument improperly laid? Because is that not <coughs> what the essence of the problem is? Let me go back to Patricia, who, who yeah. raised the subject. I, I think it's a, it's a wee bit more than that, Dave. Um, I, th I think you're right. Um, but our objection originally to there being nothing on the record was that that then meant we were in limbo and there was no clear explanation to Parliament or to any onlooker as to what we were actually talking about. So when I read this, I thought, actually, what is needed is just a clearer form of words. So unless uh -huh. it, it struck me, um, and apologies to any government civil servants who may be listening, <laughs> that and there are some that are absolutely excellent, and the vast majority are, but this struck me as the kind of thing that perhaps... Um, someone in a fit of pique about our interest in the matter has drawn up um, and uh, you know it, in a, a, a spirit of helpfulness I, I drafted the words that I had which I think actually are clearer without taking away the meaning and I say again those were accordingly the instrument made and laid as set out above was not a properly approved instrument and therefore had no legal effect and is not therefore a Scottish statutory instrument Ministers have achieved the desired policy outcome by laying a laid-only commencement order <coughs> and uh, either negative, if we get that cleared, or, or affirmative procedure instrument. Um, because I think Parliament has to understand too, because the, the, the words that we've been given by the Minister don't actually tell us about the policy outcome having been achieved, as he does in his letter. So I felt it was important that was added in as well. So, I'm, I mean, I can give those I words to Clark. Can, well, can it... Can just to clarify. Okay. Uh, I think that's fine, and, and um, having heard the words for the second time, you know, and, and maybe they've sunk in a wee bit, but just one little query, again, about the made and laid. I mean, it was laid, certainly, 
but was it made because it was improperly laid? So it wouldn't have been made. Is that? I mean, could we just delete made and? I don't can think I, can I can I can I just from from the chair just make a point about our process? Uh, we we are not masters of what ultimately gets published. What we are doing, and I propose we do, is I think what Patricia's come forward sounds perfectly reasonable to me, and we put it forward as our view of what should be published uh, back to the Minister uh, in, in exactly the form that Patricia's laid. I'm, I'm perfectly content with that. Ultimately, it is for the government to take the decision as to what is published, but the Parliament does control the business bulletin. So we are not, we, 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 our, our comments back to the government should be taken very seriously because it is the Parliament's bulletin that we're talking about the contents of, but the government has to provide the contents and we are suggesting what they say. And I think on that basis, let's send it back to the government, indeed reflecting the uncertainties that David has identified for them to deal with and we'll take our position thereafter if we feel the need to do so. Is everybody content we take that approach then? Mm -hmm. Patricia? Could I just say for today's benefit, I mean, I, I was trying to change as little as possible yeah, as I could yeah. of the government's version, yeah, yeah. so I just took made and laid from their words, because that's what they've said. Um, if it's wrong, obviously it should be changed. Mm -hmm. It's only in quantum physics that something can exist and Indeed, not exist and not at the exist, same yeah. time. You might point yeah. that out to them. Um, <laughs> but, I mean, I don't really want to get into that, neither do no, you, I'm but that's the, 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 the Heisenberg uncertainty and principle, and Professor. Yeah. Yeah. That's big to mind, but there you are. <laughs> right. Uh, uh, that, I, that, I think, uh, concludes our discussion on item one and therefore ends the public part of the meeting. We now move into private session.